Hey there, Greg Smith here, and in this video, we're going to look at how the Tor Pros transition in the downswing and how it can help you to improve your downswing so you can hit the ball longer and straighter. So this is an area of the golf swing that a lot of amateur golfers struggle with, and I'm guessing you struggle with it, the fact that you're watching this video. And the problem is that the golf swing is quite counterintuitive. How we generate force in the golf swing is through rotation. So the pelvis turns, the torso turns, and that's how we get the speed. So yes, we use the ground to generate some force, but there's a huge amount of rotational force or torque that we're creating in that downswing to generate speed. And a problem that a lot of amateur golfers have is as they start to unwind the body, the hands, arms, and club follow with that uh, movement of the pelvis and the torso. So the quicker you go, the worse it gets. Now, a lot of golf coaching focuses on the sequencing. So the idea that as we start this downswing move, the pelvis goes first, then the torso goes, then the arms, hands, and eventually club coming through. But that's very difficult to do. And we certainly see this with the top players in the world and stuff like 3D data uh, is able to show us by how much this happens and certain ranges that we look at. But that's only going to be effective if you know what to do with the hands and arms to plane the club up in that downswing transition. So what I want to do now is just transition over to the 3D software. I'm going to show you an example of a Tor Pro and how the hands, arms and club move in that downswing move to get the club on plane and in you know the, the speed slot, if you like, for that downswing. So let's jump over to the 3D software and have a look at this. Okay, so we've got Rory McIlroy on the screen here with his driver swing. Uh, this is an old swing, so his swing has changed a little bit, but the movement of the hands is still very similar. And if I just run this through in 2D, you can see what's happening with the hands. Just in this transition, look, it kind of drops. It certainly looks like it drops down, but you can almost see that it actually kind of drops a little bit behind as well as he goes into that transition. See how the butt end of the club starts to follow the first part of that uh, line we've got on the screen. If I bring this up into 3D now, we'll actually see that with the hand tray. So we can see, you have to excuse what it does with the hands there going back. It's uh, sometimes it just gives some funny positions, but watch what's happening in this downswing transition. That orange line for the hand arc coming down comes behind that yellow line you'd almost expect it to come in front of that yellow line to get back into the ball but it actually comes behind and you can see that more so actually from the target view so again we'll see it goes back we see that yellow line drawing behind the shoulders and then that orange line starts to drop those hands from the inside and look what's happening with his club shaft there now his hands are certainly coming from an inside arc, but look how much inside that club shaft is in the downswing. It's a real kind of in to out motion that we're seeing there. So it's really interesting just watching that movement in 3D and watching that hand plane, because we can clearly see that as he starts that downswing transition, the hands do not go forwards, they come behind. Okay, so now we know that Starting that downswing move, we actually see the club and the hands from the top of backswing actually move backwards. It moves behind the golfer. And that's where that above view is so helpful because you can actually see that happen in real time. Now, if you think about that, that's quite counterintuitive, isn't it? We're back here and the ball is there. So we want to work that way in the downswing. That's kind of the natural feeling that you want to create to generate speed. But the reality is that that first move of the golf swing, that transition move actually goes the other way as we start that downswing. And I think that surprises a lot of golfers when they actually see that in 3D. So that is a really useful way to think about that downswing move. If we get you up to the top of the backswing and then feeling like before we unwind, before we start to go this way, we actually draw a little circle with the butt end of the club to actually move the club back behind then we can start worrying about that sequence. Or if you want something more straightforward, just unwind and we can get the club coming back on a much better plane at speed. So let's have a little go at that and see what that kind of does to my club delivery. So 
And I'm going to create quite an exaggerated sort of loop in on this downswing. I'm going to try and get that club going backwards like we saw in the 3D video to get that initial inside move. So I'm going to go nice and slow with this to try and get the, the move quite deliberate. But we can see that I've got really got an inside club delivery of the ball. The ball really drew quite a lot with that ball flight because of this kind of backwards movement that I'm creating in the downswing. Now, what I need to do with that then is start working on the clearance and the bits we talked about earlier, that sequencing. But I really want to bed that transition in first. If I can get the club coming inside initially, then I can clear my body. I can release as hard as I like. And that's going to give me tons of downswing separation and loads and loads of speed. And it's also going to make it easier to control the club more consistently through impact. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you found it useful, please give it a like and share. Also, you might want to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content on how to hit the ball better than ever. Thanks for watching.